Hi folks, I thought I would make this short video to tell you about a period when I really wish there'd been a course like this available for me. So when I was at art school, I used to draw in sketchbooks a lot. I had a big pile of sketchbooks full of drawings from life and some big sheets of paper that I used to take out to draw from life. If I started a drawing on a big sheet and I ran out of space, I would get my print stick out and stick on another bit on the side of it and I'd carry on the drawing. We were encouraged to go out and draw from life a lot. We were encouraged to go and draw at the zoo and um, casualty departments, the hairdressers, the streets of Glasgow, anywhere we could take a sketchbook really. When I left art school, this is pre-internet days, I moved down to London and I bought a copy of the Writers and Artists Yearbook and I would spend lots of time sat on the floor beside my landline ringing up publishers. Publishers were really friendly and I would ask if I could go in some, for some advice and I'd go and see them and then I'd ask if they had a friend who worked somewhere else and they would um, point me in the direction of somebody else and I'd go and see them and they would give me lots of advice and I was ready to soak it up because I really wanted to get into publishing. During the day I worked at the Science Museum in the bookshop and every evening I would work on my kitchen table trying to get together a portfolio of work that publishers would like. So the main advice that I got was that they liked bright colours, um, a lovable character, a consistent character that would work right the way through the book. And I was just like a sponge taking it all up. And eventually I made a portfolio of work and I was commissioned to make my first picture book. It was a really fun, exciting time. And I started on this adventure, making book after book after book. And one project led to another. And then I had lots of publishers who make baby books get in touch. They wanted me to do baby board books. And in the end, I made probably 40 board books for babies. And as I went along, publishers were saying, we want it flatter and brighter. And can you just brighten up that colour a bit? And could you just flatten that texture there a little bit? What I realised over time was that I was so in a loop of working to deadlines and under so much pressure that I'd just stopped drawing in sketchbooks. Drawing in a sketchbook felt like something frivolous that I shouldn't be doing anymore. Now I was a real illustrator. But it was really hard to sustain that level of work without having any time to be playful. And also I found that the flat, bright, colourful work didn't allow me to express anything more complicated than just a happy scene. It was very, very limiting to the kind of stories that I could illustrate. And also it just didn't feel authentic to me. It was so completely different to all of my sketchbook work from before. And it came to the point where I almost stopped being an illustrator. I almost gave up completely. But then I decided I would just take a year out and live on the royalties from all of those baby books and just go back to my sketchbooks. So I spent a whole year going out and about with my sketchbooks again and I was a bit rusty because I hadn't drawn for so long. But I went back to those sketchbooks and it was really exciting. I got that lovely sense of play again and I made a pact with myself that I wouldn't consider any of these sketchbooks to be anything more than playful and they were not to lead to new picture book ideas. And although it was really scary and I didn't know where things were going, I just knew that in the end I would work it out. And during that year, I went to Battersea Dogs Home to draw the dogs and I met this dog called Finn. And I did some drawings of Finn and then I brought them home and I put the sketchbook on my shelf and I forgot about it. And then a few months later, I remember taking the sketchbook down and looking at these drawings of Finn and thinking that, I had this other notebook with the word flea bag in it and I, and I put them both together and I thought I could make a book about a dog who's looking for an owner. So I made a drawing of this character called flea bag and I sent it to my agent and my agent sent it to Alison Green who has her own imprint at Scholastic and she just wrote on the email who will give this dog a home and Apparently, Alison just replied with, we will. So I went to see Zoe Tucker, who's the designer for with Alison Green. They were just lovely. They were completely happy and willing to wait while I worked out what my new way of working was going to be. Eventually, I did this one piece of artwork that I was really pleased with. I was really pleased with the character. It was the first time that I'd managed to do a really playful, loose illustration that seemed to answer everything the publisher needed with everything that I needed. And eventually we made this book called Fleabag. And that original tagline that Hilary 
had said in the email to the publisher who will give this dog a home that made it to the cover of the final book I really, really enjoyed being able to draw happy and sad and scared and all of the other ups and downs that you get in a picture book world so that year was incredibly important for me it really helped me bring those two things together the original sketch sketchbook work and the published work and make them into one unified thing that felt authentic and over the years speaking to lots of artists and illustrators i hear that this is a really common thing it's so difficult to find the line between fulfilling a brief and knowing who you are so i'm really hoping that we can give you some of the signposts to help you on your way